new group is looking to help more younger progressives get elected to office. The Leaders We Deserve PAC plans to endorse up to 30 state legislative candidates younger than 30 years old, and it's also backing about two congressional candidates younger than 35. More than 20 percent of the U.S. are members of Gen Z. However, there's only one Gen Z member of Congress. By contrast, boomers make up about an equal percentage of the population, but nearly half of Congress. Joining us now is the president and co-founder of the group, David Hogg. He also serves on the board of March for Our Lives, the gun control advocacy group he helped found following the 2018 mass shooting in Parkland. David, welcome. Let's just start off. Tell us what are the challenges to try and get younger lawmakers actually in office? Yeah, well, I think the first one is just a, a lack of funding a lot of the time. A lot of people just don't believe that, don't believe in young people. Um, because, and on top of that, they just don't have the connections that a lot of older uh, generations do uh, in the funding network that they have. And that's one of the reasons we're, you know, a PAC and super PAC. We really want to come in and help with these candidates, uh, get them that funding. But we also want to get them grassroots volunteers that are on the ground. We want to help, you know, reverse engineer the the saying that we learned in elementary school growing up uh, as Gen Z people, which is this idea of run, hide, fight, right? You know, that we needed to learn how to survive a school shooter. Our generation needs to run for office. We need to refuse to hide from the responsibility uh, to protect future generations. And we need to fight for a better future by electing the leaders that we deserve uh, in, in states around the country. Well, since Parkland, you have become a national figure, adamant that incumbent lawmakers have failed in being able to get significant gun control passed. Why do you think it's different for freshman lawmakers, new lawmakers, especially if they don't necessarily have those connections in order to make those alliances to make the deals? Well, you know, I actually look at people like President Biden, who started when he was 29 years old in the Senate. You know, the reason why he's been one of the most effective presidents in my lifetime, whether it was the passage of the first gun safety bill in, uh, in 30 years uh, or the Inflation Reduction Act or, or other policies, uh, the reason he's been able to do that is because he's been a, he's been around and he started so young. So he was able to gain that experience early on. And I think for our candidates, you know, with President Biden's generation, um, they went out, they grew up going through a lot of uh, nuclear bomb drills, you know, uh, that students had to go through while they're in school. And I think for our generation, it should be noted that that generation previously went on to pass some of the largest arms reduction treaties in human history uh, to limit the proliferation of nuclear weapons. And I think for our generation, we need people in office that understand that similar anxiety, except for what it's like to go through a school shooter drill, uh, to be in office, to understand that fear of that, but also the fear of what's going to happen to our planet for our children in the future. And we have to get to work now because we don't have the luxury of waiting. And David, part of your strategy is to really focus on state legislatures. Talk to us about why you think that's actually the battleground that's more important at this point rather than the halls of Congress. Well, I think young people have the biggest advantage that we can have on our side in politics uh, that anybody can have. One, we have the audacity to hope and believe that while our political system is broken, it is not unfixable, as we've seen from the largest youth movement since the anti-Vietnam War for protests in the form of March for Our Lives, calling for gun safety, the movements of the environmental movement, uh, the uh, movement for Black Lives, and so many others. We're trying to bring these young people that have been on the streets demanding change into office and into the ballot box to create that change. Because making progress, you know, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we have to use our left and right foot. We have to work on the inside and the outside of politics to hold our leaders accountable and also have better leaders in the first place. And the reason why we're going to state legislatures is because that's where the worst policies are coming from across the country, whether it's don't say gay, permitless carrier, these other policies. Our uh, PAC is specifically focused on states like Texas, Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, ones that are not going to flip in this election. Election, but young people are rising up to counter those horrible laws like Don't Say Gay and empower the next generation to give them that voice, to see somebody like one of our advisory board members, like Maxwell Frost, who is a former organizer with March for Our Lives, or Justin Jones in office, to give them that hope that things are getting better, that your vote does matter and your voice is heard. Uh, but I want to follow up with you on that. Do you think that some of the progressive younger members of Congress or even in state legislatures, while they have been able to have a bully pulpit, they've been able to say their piece, do you think that they've been effective in actually changing uh, laws, in actually affecting policy? Well, I, it's not whether or not I think they've been effective. It's that I know that they've been effective, especially at the state level. You know, before Parkland, a lot of the time it was considered too taboo to even talk about something as a Democrat, like universal background checks, because it was too toxic, toxic of a political issue. You know, after Parkland, many people said young people can't 
uh, change things in Tallahassee because this is Florida. It's a Republican state. Um, and even if you call for changes, it's not going to happen. But we went up there and we did, and we changed gun laws. And then we've passed over 100 gun laws in state legislatures around the country since. So I think the bottom line is change takes time. It doesn't happen in one election cycle or one, with one candidate. Uh, it happens with time and with many candidates. And that's why we're doing the work at Leaders We Deserve. We're not, we're not trying to be an organization that supports, uh, you know, 500 people running for office and, you know, very uh, supports them in a very limited way. We really want to come in to help 15 to 30 candidates campaigns and supercharge them. And I have some exciting news, actually, in that I just got off the phone with our first endorsee, um, who we are not announcing yet, but is a young woman from Texas. And we are extremely excited for the coming weeks to announce our support of her uh, and a couple other people. Well, we will look forward to hearing those names. Uh, before I let you go, David, though, uh, one question for you. You are always very passionate as a passionate advocate for the causes that you believe in, though you have become a lightning rod, particularly uh, from uh, the, the right who view you um, uh, with a lot of skepticism. Are you at all concerned that giving your, your endorsement to any of these candidates might cause them to, uh, to suffer the consequences of, of greater funding on the right, greater challenges, uh, because you are a lightning rod? No, so I think it's important to note that the first candidates that we're really supporting um, are candidates in open blue seat primaries um, to help elect more generations uh, or more people from our generation in open seats. Now, what that means is, you know, it's a safely, pretty much a safely Democratic district uh, with somebody who is retiring or leaving their seat. We are not here to challenge incumbent Democrats. I think that's, you know, one thing in particular we are not here to do. We're here to bring in the next generation as a lot of the boomers move on in the first place. And I think for, you know, after we win those primaries, we'll get more involved in more competitive races. And, you know, if we if uh, the right wing really sees me as that much of a threat, I say bring it on because young people are here. We're ready to fight and we're voting in record numbers and very clearly for candidates that support progressive issues like gun violence prevention, like, uh, you know, fighting climate change and many other policies that protect the interests of the people and not the special interests. So if they want to do that, I say bring it on. All right. David Hogg, thank you. Thank you.